To be honest, I don't. I just hear from other people if something is fake or not real. It is now called the deadliest fire in the San Francisco Bay Area's history. Find out why so many lives were lost. And does rerouting the Dakota Access Pipeline mean the fight is over, or is there more controversy to come? And welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection, reporting real issues that matter to you. I'm Chandra Major. And I'm Alex Stein. Thank you for joining us today. Here are today's top stories. California's first black female judge and longest serving jurist, Viano Spencer, has died at the age of 96. The LACC alumna was appointed to the Los Angeles Municipal Court in 1961. She also served on the Superior Court and State Appeals Court before retiring in 2007. Spencer is described as a trailblazer who became the first appointed black woman judge at a time when there were few opportunities for women of color. After earning her associate's degree from LACC in 1949, she went on to earn her law degree from Southwestern Law School in 1952. She died in her sleep of natural causes October 25th. With the recent rise in fake news on the internet, many people are questioning if that rise helped to influence voters in the recent presidential election. Two examples of the most popular fake news stories included Pope Francis endorsing Donald Trump for president and an FBI agent involved in Hillary's email leaks found dead in an apartment. Both stories were later confirmed as false. Facebook and Google are taking most of the criticism for potentially swinging voters in favor of President-elect Donald Trump. The companies have responded by cutting certain fake news stories from their advertising networks and making those sites harder to find. The Pulitzer Prize-winning fact-checking site PolitiFact has launched a new section of their site devoted to fake news. A few sites reported as perpetrating fake news include The Free Thought Project, Infowars.com, Red State, Blue Nation Review, conservativeoutfitters.com, and Occupy Democrats. And Chandra, you went out and talked to LACC students about fake news. How was that? Well, reactions were mixed, Alex. Some students had a vague knowledge of fake news, and others were just pessimistic. It's hard to see why so many question the news nowadays. First, Mark Zuckerberg is accused of not doing enough to stop fake news from appearing on Facebook to the most recent ordeal where a man showing up at a Washington, D.C. pizzeria with a rifle, firing a shot into a restaurant, claiming he was self-investigating news reports of a satanic child sex trafficking ring. Fake news is going from controversy to crisis. So we asked LACC students, what do you think about fake news? I personally think news in general is not great to society just because I think that it gives people a, one perspective and I think that the media has a, has a tendency to portray um, a story as being one, one um, perspective like terrorism or things like that, that everyone that watches it freaks out. Well, I'm not sure what a fake news story is, but um, I mean, isn't most of the news that we see today fake? Like or not, I wouldn't say fake, but manipulated, and and twisted and uh, taken out of context. I think fake news shouldn't be uh, allowed because it, it makes people believe in some sort of lie, and we cannot have that because what if uh, they say something that makes it look realistic, but it's not. Americans will say goodbye to President Obama in less than 40 days. Over the past eight years, President Obama has made great achievements and overcome Republican challenges. Here is a short list of Obama's top accomplishments. Number one, the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, is considered to be the, his greatest achievement domestically. Number two, Obama authorized the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. Number three, legislation of same-sex marriage nationally. Number four, received 2009 Nobel Peace Prize. And finally, he ended the 2008 recession. 
With Donald Trump's inauguration a mere five weeks away, the president-elect's picks for cabinet positions continue to roll in. According to the Washington Post, Trump has named South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley as the ambassador of the United Nations. Longtime Goldman Sachs executive Stephen Machuin is slated for Secretary of Treasury. Secretary of Labor will be filled by Elaine Chao. Trump has also named Georgia representative and vocal Obamacare critic Thomas Price. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders intends to use the national platform his presidential campaign provided to influence the future of the Democratic Party. According to Reuters, Sanders will work to make the Democrats a more grassroots-oriented party in an effort to appeal more to the working-class sector of America. Sanders has also endorsed Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison to take over for Debbie Wasserman Schultz as the new head of the Democratic National Committee. The death toll has reached 36 as the deadliest fire in Oakland's history claims the lives of mostly young people who found themselves trapped inside a warehouse party when an electrical fire erupted. The fire ripped through a converted warehouse during an electric dance music party. The building, called the Ghost Ship, was not permitted for living nor parties. The leader of the Ghost Ship, art collective Derek Ion, sparked backlash when his Twitter post expressed concern for the loss of his material things with no mention of the lives lost in his home. We now turn to Yvonne Reyes, who is going to tell us about a Spanish premiere of a short film. Yvonne? A love story, a drama, a film that brings a message of social and political immigration issues. Let's find out from the director and cast members of Sin Fronteras, Without Boundaries. Do you have your documentation? You mean my driver's license, right? Do you have it? I'm just going to get back into sir, the car. Sir, Everybody's right there, sir. Oh, 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 I'm hoping we'll connect more with people because it is a love story. It's, it's um, a love story that's in the background of, of the immigration issue. So my goal is to open up questions, to get people to understand that it's not so simple. They realize that, okay, this is, there's a little more, lay, there's, there are more layers to this issue than just simply building a wall or deporting everybody. Well, the conflict of the character is that he's here illegally and through a really bad trick, he gets tricked into stopping thinking it's just uh, DUI and uh, he gets deported. So even though he spent his whole life here, he has a business here, he pays taxes, he's about to get married, his, his girlfriend's pregnant, then to lose everything to get deported just because you don't have your papers. So how many of those people exist in this country? That they, they, they were brought here very young, they were born and raised here, they have businesses here, they work here, and now they're in fear of possibly being deported, or their parents are. So that's a very prevalent issue right now. That's what struck me. Como Latinos, ¿qué tan importante es nuestra labor aquí en los Estados Unidos? Importantísima. O sea, nosotros no somos ni más ni menos que nadie. Simplemente somos. Y eso es lo que tenemos que decirle a todo mundo con, con nuestro arte, de que esto es quien somos y que, y que venimos aquí a luchar y a no rendirnos y a hacer la diferencia. We are members of Earth um, and everybody was once an immigrant at some point. Let's not forget that. House is in the U.S. I'm going to find a way to get you back, Gabriel. But I need to know that you're still with me. To close the night, we kept the message of the film that love transcends all boundaries. Reporting for LACC TV, I'm Yvonne Reyes. Back to you in the studio. Coming up on Los Angeles Community Connection, you won't need all of this if you shop local. Stay tuned after the break and see what unique finds are right across the street from LACC. Welcome back to LACC TV. We now turn to entertainment reporter Drew Phillip to tell us about the movie Moonlight. Drew? Thanks, Alex. 
I'm not a very emotional person, but when I recently saw the movie Moonlight, I actually teared up. It's the kind of movie where I can tear up just thinking about it. Moonlight has so many depths and layers. It's raw portrayal of humanity, which really captivated me and left me thinking and feeling for days. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Moonlight, directed by Barry Jenkins, is a story of an outcast male chronicling his human development. The movie got a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes and has already won four Gotham Awards, including Best Picture, was nominated for six Independent Spirit Awards and 10 Critics' Choice Awards. I definitely predict this movie will win Golden Globe and an Oscar for Best Picture this season. So hurry to the theater and go see the best movie of the year, Moonlight. Thanks, Drew. I can't wait to see that movie. Cool. <laughs> Any other movies on your radar? Um, not that are in theaters, but I saw a great movie over the weekend on Netflix called Adulterers, and it's a hilarious dark comedy. I highly recommend that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Drew. Thank, Thank you. you. A huge victory for Standing Rock, but it's far from over. Just weeks after the Army Corps of Engineers issued an eviction notice to the thousands of water protectors, they've denied the final permit to continue drilling under Lake Ahu and the Missouri River. Tulsi, Gabbard, and over 2,000 veterans joined water protectors that have been camped out since early April. Some vets even volunteered to become their human shields after seeing recent violent confrontations with police officials. Army Corps of Engineers said it would explore alternative routes pending an environmental impact study. Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte plans to shake up his country's telecom industry by eliminating the country's duopoly. Duterte says Philippines long distance telephone company and Globe Telecom delivers slow and unreliable internet and phone service. So he plans to create a reliable communication industry by allowing new telecom companies to operate in the country of 98 million. LACC sports reporter Eric Skippings joins us today to give us an update on professional basketball. Eric? Thank you, Alex. We are in for a slobber knocker this season. A rivalry for the ages, the Cavs versus the Warriors. And I'm going to break it down for you. Starting out with Stephen Curry of the Warriors. This man cannot miss a three-pointer. The boy don't know how to miss a three-pointer. Somebody better buy him a dictionary so he can start to learn the definition of the word miss. Now, Curry's out to get his throne back from Cleveland. He's out to prove that he has what it takes. But as a great man once said, to be the man, Woo, you've got to beat the man. And right now, LeBron James is the man. Curry's got a great team by his side with the addition of Kevin Durant. Now let me tell you, Durant may be a warrior now, but he still knows how to bring home the thunder. The warriors are ready for war. Now on the other side, shifting gears, we've got Cleveland. They're playing defense this year. They got their first championship and it felt so nice. Oh boy, they are going for it twice. And the key to winning here is in the hands of the big three. Not one, not two, but three. Now Kyrie Irving, he's still developing. He's still growing. But when the chips are down, the game is up and you've got to love it. Now speaking of love, Kevin Love, I love you. I respect you. But get your head in the game and play like a b-ball player. You're holding your team back. Now finally, the king himself, LeBron James. He calls himself the king and rightfully so. He leads his team on and off the court. And if they play like the champs they are, you cannot stop them. So Eric, who do you think is gonna win the championship this year? You know what, Chandra, I gotta admit, I'm a Heat man, but I think the Warriors are gonna take it home this season, locked down. I'm going with Timberwolves. Timberwolves? Yes, me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, everyone's wrong sometime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Medical aid in dying was recently legalized in Colorado during the election. Here's our LACC news reporter, Drew Phillip, to tell us more about this story. Medical aid in dying is a new end-of-life option available in California for the terminally ill, which went into effect this year. Recently, I spoke with Joe Barnes, California Outreach Manager for Compassion and Choices, to further explain what this new law means for California residents. Around. Sure. So Compassionate Choices, we've been around for about 30 years. We originated out of Santa Monica, California, and we progressed and became a national organization. Uh, we fully support hospice, palliative care, but also know that medical aid in dying is part of the standard practice of care at end of life uh, mm -hmm. here in California. Now that Governor Brown has signed the law, 
uh, that went into effect on uh, October uh, 5th was when the law was signed, and October, uh, June 9th became the effective date. Of 2016 this year? Yes. Oh, cool. And what, what was it like before he signed that law? Yeah. What was it like for people that were suffering? Were there any other options for them? Sure. So pretty much what's been a standard practice of end-of-life care mm -hmm. uh, included originally uh, VSET, which is voluntary stop eating and drinking, uh, hospice care, and also palliative care. Uh, but we found that many people with uh, different types of terminal diseases, uh, hospice care was not always the best option to right. manage their pain. Uh, so we find that many people now are really appreciative that Governor Brown signed medical aid and dying into long California because they have that expanded option now at end of life. If their pain ever becomes so unbearable when they've been diagnosed with a prognosis of six months or less to live. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely an empathetic mm -hmm. law that he passed yeah, yeah. for everyone. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, you, you're terminally ill and dying and you don't know when you're going to die, and but you know you're going to die, so why not want to die in the peace of your home or wherever, surrounded by your family and friends, at your choice. Sure. So that's why I think this is such a great thing. Pet owners have the humane option to have their terminally ill dogs and cats put to sleep, but unfortunately in the U.S. this option is only legal for humans in six states. California, Washington, Oregon, Vermont, Colorado, and Montana. To learn more about medical aid and dying, visit CompassionAndChoices.org. And coming up later in our broadcast, we will discuss the holiday season and some new ideas for shopping locally. So stay tuned for more. Here at the Los Angeles Community Connection, we strive to bring you stories that impact our community. Eric Skippings invites our very own Alex Stein to the set of LACC TV to discuss what it takes to produce a podcast. Welcome to LACC TV. I'm your host, Eric Skippings, and I'm sitting today with the very funny, very talented Alex Stein, host of the Alex Stein podcast to talk about podcasting and what it takes to become a popular podcaster. Thank you for joining us, Alex. Thank you, Eric. Glad to be here. All right. Let's get right into this. So can you tell us what exactly is a podcast? Well, a podcast is technically just an audio file that's on your computer. It's an MP3, it's something that is easily accessed through, for the most part, iTunes as people listen to it. Um, but it, it can be a long-form interview. It can be a show about uh, any topic. You can, you can learn stuff. You can talk to um, comedians, entertainers. It's it's a wide array of basically an audio file that you can listen to a show. I see. So that's the technical side, audio file. Uh, what about the equipment, setting up? What does it take to physically make a podcast? Well, my first podcast that I ever made, I literally just talked into my cell phone and used that as the audio file. Anybody has it. Everybody has a cell phone. You can make a podcast by just talking into your phone. That's a good way to start. I wouldn't continue it. Later on, get better microphones, get a mixer, get a, a Zoom recorder, because you can lose files. I've lost files I recording straight have. into GarageBand. Don't do that, everybody at home. Don't do it. Get a Zoom. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, phones are really starting to come into their own. We're, uh, we can make movies with cell phones now. I mean, oh, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, so that's how you make a podcast. How you make a popular one. Oh, if I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't be here. No, <laughs> Uh, to make a popular podcast, the best thing is to be consistent, to have something that people can rely on, something that you are interested in. If it's a topic that you're, if you love just the planet Mars, make a podcast about Mars, like, and it gets people into it. The name is important, the logo is important, but if, if you're a host, you want to, I want a host that loves what they're doing. And you can tell, especially with audio, you can tell the little minute things in, in people's voices that they're, they're bored, they're, they're, they're not, not interested. They're not interested, yeah. Yeah. And that's... To take a second, I have to compliment you on, I've listened to your podcast. There's interest, there's <laughs> fun, I'm loving it. Thank you, thank uh, you. Why don't you tell us about that? Tell us about your podcast. Uh, my podcast, the, uh, the Alex Stein Podcast. Got your That's logo. my cat, Mountain Goat. Uh, is a podcast where it's, 
to me, it's, it's funny because my name's Alex Stein, obviously, but I'm not really a celebrity, so I thought it'd be funny to call it the Alex Stein Podcast, and I could interview people long-form interviews. Uh, the reason why, like the Adam Kroll podcast, like everybody knows who Adam Kroll is. Right. So they, you know, like who, who, who knows who Alex Stein is. Uh, but I love talking to people long form. Like you, I've had two hour conversations with comedians and guests where it's felt like it's been 10 minutes. Right. Like things just fly by when you get people in their, uh, in their, I like to call it their wheelhouse. It's what their passion is. And, and it's, it's just fun to walk. I don't even want to ask them questions. I just want to let them just keep talking. Yeah, it seems like with a, a great podcast host, you can just have a conversation that goes on and on. Mm -hmm. It's not a task, it's not a chore, it's not a job, it's, it's a conversation. Yeah, and sometimes it can start off stiff, but as you get in a little bit further, people loosen up, they talk, they say things they shouldn't have said, and then later on they'll be like, hey, can I take that out? So there's a lot of editing and a lot of, uh, a lot of just, I mean, just relaxing with people, one-on-one -on -one conversation, it, it, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, do you have any uh, examples what someone has asked? Well, I guess you can't say it exactly. I, I can't say names, but I did have somebody on that uh, we talked about them being a Republican. And after a while, we recorded it. They're like, can you just keep that out? That I don't, I don't really want to be outed as a Republican. Uh, I'm like, totally. I totally understand. I mean, you didn't say anything bad, but if this is, this is just as much your episode as it is mine. Right. I like to think. Two-part work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, you know, you, you want your podcast to be successful. Do you ever see not just your podcast, but any podcast reaching mainstream level? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think podcasting is definitely on the way up. It's only expanding. Mark Marin has his his big podcast got turned into a TV show. There's so much stuff uh, on TV that it, podcasting is is then is the step to TV. I think having a great host, having somebody that's comfortable talking, interviewing, uh, it's definitely going to take up more and more of of our entertainment, I think, in the future. Uh, so, so you don't see it going the way of radio, just here to stay? No, it's def I think it's definitely here to stay. I think it's like radio evolved, like radio plus. Because radio is great, but you kind of have to wait for your time to be on. Podcasts, you turn it on when you want it. And it's exactly what you want to hear. It's your schedule. It's your schedule. Like if you like Howard Stern, you can go to that and just listen to what Howard Stern talks to. Only listen to the guests that you like. And that's what podcasts, I can, even though I love this podcast, I might not like that guest, I'll skip that guest and go to the next one. I see. I promise you, I won't do that with you. Don't, please. Uh, <laughs> well, I have to wrap things up. Thank you, Alex Stein, for being here. You can check him out at This Alex Stein on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I'm Eric Skippings. Thank you all for being here, and I hope to see you all again very soon. December is upon us, and the holidays are right around the corner. Yvonne Reyes joins us to share some of the customs and holiday traditions from around the world. Yvonne, where are we going? Thanks, Sandra. Isn't it Christmas the most wonderful time of the year? I love the lights. Yeah, it's a time for like gifts, family, food, prayers and wishes. Did you ever wonder how other cultures celebrate Christmas around the world? Let me show you how different countries celebrate the festive season. Let's start with Bethlehem, Israel the city where Jesus was born. Naturally, Christmas here is a major event. The city is adorned with flags and beautiful decorations. The Christmas market thrives in the city and Christmas plays are performed. In Japan, Christmas is known as a time to spread happiness rather than a religious celebration. Japan has a small percentage of Christian's population and for them, Christmas is more of a commercial event that Japanese people celebrate for fun. You won't see any religious decorations like nativity scenes. Instead, decorations include Christmas lights, Santa Clauses, and Christmas trees. Also, the story of Santa Claus is different. In Japan, parents come out with creative stories on how Santa Claus enters their home. They say that Santa has a magical key that unlocks all doors, so the parents leave their windows unlocked for him to come in. In Russia, Christmas is celebrated at the Festival of Winter. People start fasting for 39 days until January 6, when the evening star appears in the sky. In many regions in France, Christmas celebrations start with St. Nicholas Day on the 6th of December. Children get sweets and little gifts. On Christmas Eve, children put their polished shoes out in front of the chimney and hope that Père Noel, Father Christmas, Fill the shoes with sweets. 
in Italy, a nativity scene at Preseve is usually put up in churches, town squares, and in houses. For many, the Preseve is the most important part of Christmas decorations. The nativity scene display of manger filled with straw originally stemmed from Italy and is now a common occurrence in many countries around the world. In the Philippines, there is a special tradition of having a Christmas lantern, which is called Parol. The lantern is a star shape symbolizing the star of Bethlehem, and it is made of bamboo and paper. Hanukkah is an eight-day Jewish festival, also known as the Festival of Lights. Jewish observe the festival by lighting one candle on a nine-branch menorah, or Hanukkah candelabrum, each day. This year, Hanukkah will begin on the evening of Saturday, December 24th, and end on the evening of Sunday, January 1st. As Australia is on the Southern Hemisphere, Christmas is in the summertime, and thus it is easy to understand that during Christmas, time friends and family often gather at the beach. Some people celebrate Christmas, others might celebrate Hanukkah, Ramadan, or Kwanzaa. But in the end, we all celebrate light, peace, hope, and love all around the world. Have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. That's really interesting, Yvonne. I didn't know the nativity scene was an Italian tradition. Yes, and now it spreads all around the world. What is your favorite tradition for Christmas? I like the presents. That's, I think everybody loves presents. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. We now turn it over to James Harvey for our opinion editorial on inspiration. James? Inspirational, the act of influencing, suggesting opinions, the quality of being inspired, three types of obstacles, external, things that are out of your control, internal, issues you have direct control over, habitual, reflecting on how people get their own way, embrace your self-awareness. If you don't see or believe the obstacle, it could be a hindrance. For example, I, a 300-pound male, begin to see changes in the clothing I was wearing. Week by week, I was more encouraged to keep losing the weight. With that being said, I have a set plan that helped me reach those goals. In conclusion, take the time to think things through and find creative solution that brings life to yourself. Charles T. Jones wrote, you'll be the same person in five years as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. This is my opinion. I'm Jim Harvey. Back to you at the desk. Malls may be convenient, but this holiday season, try something new and shop local. LACC TV fashion reporter Chandra Major shows us what you can find locally at Melrose Antique Store. When you shop local, you really do find cool stuff. Right across from LACC is Eric Berg's Early California Antiques. Walking into the store is like walking into an art gallery of California's past. It is more than just memorabilia and collectibles. It is a reminder of what people valued back in the day. It was a long friendship, and we have a whole bunch of their work, and it's just beautiful. Philip Littell is the antique curator, giving buyers the history of what they might take home. This is Under Armour for Hollywood stuntmen in the golden age of Hollywood, because, of course, they had points on the swords in the movies, and this made sure nobody died. It's Christmas. Toys, beautiful car toys. Eric, Eric Berg, who's the boss, is a car guy. So we get lots of car things and uh, here, we even have a trailer. Basically, it's, it's a museum of California design before World War II. That's one of the things you'll get when you come here. You'll really get all the influences, all the styles that came together and worked together or even created new styles. Keep the holiday spirits cheerful by shopping local. For LACC TV, I'm Chandra Major. That wraps it up for our last newscast of the semester. Be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash LACCTV to keep up with all the latest news. Reporting for Los Angeles Community Connection, I'm Chandra Major. And I'm Alex Stein. On behalf of the entire cast and crew at LACCTV, have a safe and happy holiday season. Thanks for watching, and please clap.